So the uh, first identity that we're going to try to prove, um, it relies on some of the stuff that we did last day. So can anybody give me a suggestion on where I want to start for the first one? Yes? Just to confirm, is 10 of x squared equivalent to 512? Well, no? Okay. Um, can anyone give us an identity maybe to start with? All right, maybe we should write down some of the identities from last day before we get going. Um, some of the ones that we're going to be using today, other than the basic ones, are ones like sine squared plus cos squared equals 1, 1 plus cotangent squared um, equals, uh, what would that be, cosecant, and tangent squared theta plus 1 equals secant squared theta. Okay, so those are the... Uh, Isn't it cotangent for a sec? Did I say cos? I meant cotangent, yeah. Thank you, that should be a T. Okay, so those are some of the identities we brought up at the end of last lesson, and, and we're going to use them for mo quite a bit this block. So in addition to the basic ones, these are the three that I'm referring to, which again, they are provided on the formula sheet, but you should be familiar with them to some degree. Um, I can leave it there. So any ideas on what I could do to start? Uh, convert the tangents and, and secants and cosecants into things that use sine and cosine functions. Uh, that might work in this case, but it's much simpler than that. An idea in there, Natasha? Um, tan x, tan squared x plus 1 is equal to sec squared x. Yeah, so I put secant squared x there too, and cosecant squared x minus 1. Okay, um, what else could I do? Eh? Where did that come from? Um, well, this part right here is this identity right here. So we just made that oh. switch. Okay. Uh, what else could we do? Where did that come from? That came from last lesson, Anthony. Oh, right. Uh, cosecant squared x minus 1? Sure, DJ. Um, so cosecant squared x minus 1 is equal to cotangent? Yeah, so up here, remember, I've told you these are equal. You can move them across the equal sign. So that means if I move the uh, 1 to the other side, then I would get cotangent squared theta is cosecant squared theta uh, minus 1. So that means I'm going to have secant squared, oops, it's a theta. No, it is an x, okay. Over cotangent squared theta. And now, one way that I could finish this off would be to write it out like that. 1 over, t oh, a theta jumped into a couple of mine there, huh? Oops. It was an x, but uh, that's one way we, we could finish this off. Okay, so today, again, uh, the theme is going to be getting to more comfortable with these identities since we only did them at the very end last day. So you definitely want to have a copy nearby as we work on them. These proofs that I'm about to get to here, they require some comfort with fractions. I'll show you some strategies for dealing with them as well. So I want you to try it on your own and see how far you can get. Hopefully you're comfortable working with those fractions, but um, I'll show you some good techniques if you're finding it that you're struggling a bit. Okay, so we'll catch up together. Try those two. Okay, so um, I'm just going to show you what I was mentioning there about a, one way to work with fractions. So we'll do this one first just to kind of give you an idea how, how that would work. So I'm going to take the left side and turn it into the right because uh, it looks a lot easier to simplify this. So if I went 1 over cosine x divided by cos x over sine x plus sine x over cos x, um, that's a lot of fractions. So one thing that we can do to kind of get rid of those fractions all at the same time 
is if we find out a good denominator that will work for top and bottom of this fraction. So for example, if I look at the top, it would be nice if I could multiply by cosine, right? So cosine is one of the things that I would like to multiply by. If I multiply by the top by cosine, I would have to multiply the bottom by cosine as well. So it's still equal because I did the same to top and bottom, and that means this fraction would be gone, and this fraction would be gone. There's one more fraction though. So how do I get rid of that last fraction? Multiply by sine, and to keep it equal, I have to do it on the top and the bottom. Okay, so what's going to happen is this fraction and the other two are going to disappear, and there may be something left over. Like, for example, on the top, when I multiply 1 over cos x by this piece here, what's going to be left over? Sine is going to be left over. So the top of the fraction becomes sine x. What's left over on the bottom? Uh, well, let's just go piece by piece. This first piece here, the left piece, what's left over when I multiply by cos x sine x? Yeah, cos squared. Yeah, so cos squared is going to be left over because the sines would cancel out. What's going to be left over on the last fraction? Yeah, sine squared x. So because I did the same thing to every part of that fraction, it's still equal, but now I've got no more fractions to deal with. Okay, so now sine x, um, well, there's one more identity there, sine x over 1. So now I've got the same on the left side as the right side. So that strategy of picking a good uh, fraction, like cos x sine x over cos x sine x, that can help cut down on how much fractions and simplifying you have to do. So it will happen again in this example. So um, it, can I just see, does anybody need more time for the second? Ex okay, so I'll give you some more time. But uh, again, it'll pop up where you need to do some fraction work, and it may come in handy to do that technique. Okay, let me, uh, let me start on this one now. If you're still working, keep going. Um, I don't see any identities that I could use other than the basic ones where I could replace this with sines and cosines. So that's what I'll do first. So again, you want to ask yourself that same question. How could I get rid of the denominator on the top? What would I have to multiply by to get rid of this denominator here? So how do I get rid of that? Is it really that obvious? <laughs> what do you think, Catherine? Yeah, so if I wanted to multiply by cosine, that will get rid of that fraction I'm worried about. I have to do it to the top and bottom, or it won't be equal. Okay, so what about the bottom now? Are there any fractions on the bottom? Well, there's this one. What would I like to multiply by? Cosine, and I already did, so perfect. I don't need to add anything to this. So that means I'm going to take cosine and multiply it on the top, and I'm going to take cosine and multiply it on the bottom. So what I'll be left with looks a little simpler. It'll be sine x minus sine x cos x. And I'll have a sine squared. Because that cosine would disappear. Okay. Okay. Next step. Anybody have a next step? Somebody use the F word. Sorry, I was wondering how you got the sine to sine x at the bottom. Sine squared x? Yeah. Okay, so if I was to slow that one down just to... So what I've got is the cosine here. So I need to multiply this piece by cosine. So if I multiply by cosine that den uh, denominator and that would cancel each other out. So, sorry, next strategy, next thing that looks like we might be helpful. Yeah, factor is the F word I was looking for, not the one that uh, some of you might have been thinking. So, uh, if I factored this out, I'd get sine x, 1 minus cos x.
and sine squared x on the bottom. I can see it's starting to look like this one now. It's starting to come together. If I simplify that, then I have the full proof completed. Okay. So can I just see by show of hands, how many people got at least one of those with fractions you were okay with? At least one of those. Okay, good. So again, some of these, the, the real skill is also how good you work with your fractions. So good to see. Okay. So let's take a look now um, at specifically factoring, because you may have been a while since you've thought of this. Um, can anybody factor sin or secant to the fourth minus one? Uh, not really. You'd have to do it on the other side. Oh, well, we can factor one side at a time because we haven't changed it, right? Yeah. Secant to the fourth. Any ideas? Catherine? It would, but I'm looking for fact. I'm telling you ahead of time, this one is a factoring example. So can anybody factor that? Okay, I saw Danny first, so we'll see if Danny. Um, ten, is it tangent squared of the, the power of two? Um, it won't quite work out that way. We're on that way towards that same identity you're thinking of. But first, we have to factor it, and there's no way around it. There's going to be a secant in there. We can't change it just yet. We want to factor it first. Well, we could, well, we could factor it using substitution. Let's just see here, James, what you got to... Uh, secant squared x plus 1 times secant squared x minus 1. Yeah, so you might not recognize this, but this is the way you would think about it before. The difference of squares, and you would have gone x plus 1, x minus 1. So you might not recognize it here, but if I did factor this, like James said, I would have secant squared x plus 1, secant... Whoops squared x minus 1. And the reason it can be helpful is if you look at it, there's an identity up there now. Does anybody see which one I can replace? And the left one. Right one. Right one. Oh. <laughs> and the right one becomes tangent. So we could write this as secant squared x plus 1 times tangent squared x. And at this point, you might say to yourself, well, that's fine, but now I'm stuck, and I don't know what to do. Anybody have any ideas of what we can keep doing there? Do you see to go to the other side? We can't move things to the other sides, right? No, work on oh, the work other side. Oh, work on the other Yeah, that's exactly the, the thing I would suggest. Is if you're stuck here, then think about what you could do to the other side. Okay. So what would you want to do on the other side of this equation? Factor that thing on the top. Yeah, let's factor the top of that fraction. So it would become sine squared x times 1 plus cos squared x over cosine 4x. Any ideas what we could do now? So remember, you've got to keep your goal in mind. So far, this is what I'm trying to make it equal to. So if I want to make them look similar, I'm going to need to see a tangent and a secant over here, right? How can we make tangent appear on this side? In fact, even better, how can we make tangent squared appear? Sine squared over cos squared will work. Yep, so I could separate this. And I could call it cos squared x and cos squared x. That could be rewritten as tangent squared x, 1 plus cos squared x. Sorry, I'm just running out of room. Oh, actually, maybe I'm not. Ha-ha. <laughs> OK, so I've got one more piece that I have to try to work out. I have, I've got tangent squared on both sides. But I need to get secant in there somehow. Does anybody have an idea how we could do that? Sure, Danny. Expand the top. Expand the top? OK. Let's uh, see what happens if we expand the top. I'm running out of room, so I'll do it on this side. 